First Chronicles 7. The sons of Issachar, Tola, Pua, Jeshub, and Shimron, four in all. The sons of Tola, Uzai, Rephaiah, Jeriel, Jemai, Ibsam, and Samuel, heads of their families. During the reign of David, the descendants of Tola, listed as fighting men in their genealogy, number 22,600. The son of Uzai, Israhiah. The sons of Israhiah, Michael, Obadiah, Joel, and Ishiah. All five of them were chiefs. According to their family genealogy, they had 36,000 men ready for battle, for they had many wives and children. The relatives who were fighting men belonging to all the clans of Issachar, as listed in their genealogy, were 87,000 in all. Three sons of Benjamin, Bela, Bekeir, and Jediael. The sons of Bela, Esban, Uzai, Uziel, Jeremoth, and Irai, heads of families, five in all, their genealogical record listed 22,034 fighting men. The sons of Becher, Zemira, Joash, Eliezer, Elioni, Amri, Jeremoth, Abijah, Anathoth, and Alameth. All these were the sons of Becher. Their genealogical record listed the heads of families and 20,200 fighting men. The son of Jediael, Bilhan. The sons of Bilhan, Jeush, Benjamin, Ehud, Kenaana, Zethan, Tarshish, and Ahishahar. All these sons of Jediael were heads of families. There were 17,200 fighting men ready to go out to war. The Shuppites and the Huppites were the descendants of Ir, and the Hushites the descendants of Aher. The sons of Naphtali, Jaziel, Gunai, Jezer, and Shilem, the descendants of Bila. The descendants of Manasseh, Azrael was his descendant through his Aramean concubine. She gave birth to Machir, the father of Gilead. Machir took a wife from among the Huppites and Shuppites. His sister's name was Makah. Another descendant was named Zelophehad, who had only daughters. Makir's wife, Makah, gave birth to a son and named him Peresh. His brother's name was Sheresh, and his sons were Ulam and Rakem. The son of Ulam, Bedan, these were the sons of Gilead, son of Makir, the son of Manasseh. His sister, Hamolaketh, gave birth to Ishhad, Abiazer, and Mela. The sons of Shemida were Ahian, Shechem, Lekai, and Aniam. The descendants of Ephraim, Shuthala, Bered his son, Tehath his son, Eliada his son, Tehath his son, Zabad his son, and Shuthala his son. Ezra and Eliad were killed by the native-born men of Gath when they went down to seize their livestock. Their father Ephraim mourned for them many days, and his relatives came to comfort him. Then he made love to his wife again, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. He named him Beriah, because there had been misfortune in his family. His daughter was Shira, who built lower and upper Beth Horan, as well as Uzen Shira. Repha was his son, Reshaph his son, Tela his son, Tehan his son, Ladan his son, Amihud his son, Elishama his son, Nun his son, and Joshua his son. Their lands and settlements included Bethel and its surrounding villages, Naran to the east, Gezer and its villages to the west, and Shechem and its villages all the way to Aya and its villages. Along the borders of Manasseh were Beth Shan, Tanak, Megiddo, and Dor together with their villages. The descendants of Joseph, son of Israel, lived in these towns. The sons of Asher, Imna, Ishva, Ishvai, and Bariah, their sister was Sarah. The sons of Bariah, Heber, and Malkiel, who was the father of Birziath. Heber was the father of Japhlet, Shomer, and Hotham, and of their sister Shua. The sons of Japhlet, Pesach, Bimhal, and Ashvath. These were Japhlet's sons. The sons of Shomer, Ahai, Roga, Hoba, and Aram, the sons of his brother Helam, Zopha, Imna, Shelesh, and Amal, the sons of Zopha, Sua, Harnefer, Shual, Birai, Imra, Bezer, Hod, Shama, Shilsha, 
Ithran, and Bera, the sons of Jether, Jephunneh, Pispa, and Ara, the sons of Ula, Ara, Haniel, and Reziah. All these were descendants of Asher, heads of families, choice men, brave warriors, and outstanding leaders. The number of men ready for battle as listed in their genealogy was 26,000. 1 Chronicles 8 Benjamin was the father of Bela, his firstborn, Ashbel the second son, Ahara the third, Noha the fourth, and Rapha the fifth. The sons of Bela were Adar, Gera, Abihud, Abishua, Naaman, Ahoa, Gera, Shephuphan, and Huram. These were the descendants of Ehud, who were heads of families of those living in Geba, and were deported to Manahoth, Naaman, Ahijah, and Gera, who deported them, and who was the father of Uzzah and Ahihud. Sons were born to Shaharaim in Moab, after he had divorced his wives Hushim and Bera. By his wife Hodesh he had Jobab, Zebiah, Misha, Malcam, Jeuz, Sakiah, and Mirma. These were his sons, heads of families. By Husham he had Abitub and Elpal. The sons of Elpal, Eber, Misham, Shemed, who built Ono and Lod with its surrounding villages, and Bariah and Shema, who were heads of families of those living in Aijalon, and who drove out the inhabitants of Gath, Ahio, Shashak, Jeremoth, Zebediah, Arad, Eder, Michael, Ishpa, and Joah were the sons of Bariah. Zebediah, Meshalem, Hizkai, Heber, Ishmarai, Isliah, and Jobab were the sons of Elpale. Jakim, Zikri, Zabdi, Elianai, Zelathai, Eliel, Adaiah, Beraiah, and Shimrath were the sons of Shimei, Ishpan, Eber, Eliel, Abdon, Zikri, Hanan, Hananiah, Elam, Anthathijah, Iphdaiah, and Penuel were the sons of Sheshach, Shamsharai, Shahariah, Athaliah, Jerashia, Elijah, and Zikri were the sons of Jeroham. All these were the heads of families, chiefs as listed in their genealogy, and they lived in Jerusalem. Jael, the father of Gibeon, lived in Gibeon. His wife's name was Makah, and his firstborn son was Abdon, followed by Zur, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Zakar, and Mikloth, who was the father of Shimei. They too lived near their relatives in Jerusalem. Ner was the father of Kish, Kish the father of Saul, and Saul the father of Jonathan, Malchai Shua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. The son of Jonathan, Merib Baal, who was the father of Micah. The sons of Micah, Pithon, Melech, Tereah, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jehoiada. Jehoiada was the father of Alameth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. And Zimri was the father of Mosa. Mosa was the father of Benaiah. Rapha was his son. Elisa his son, and Azel his son. Azel had six sons, and these were their names, Azrakam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Shiraiah, Obadiah, and Hanan. All these were the sons of Azel, the sons of his brother, Eshek, Ulam his firstborn, Jeush the second son, and Eliphalet the third. The sons of Ulam were brave warriors who could handle the bow. They had many sons and grandsons, a hundred and fifty in all. All these were the descendants of Benjamin. 1 Chronicles 9. All Israel was listed in the genealogies recorded in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. They were taken captive to Babylon because of their unfaithfulness. Now the first to resettle on their own property in their own towns were some Israelites, priests, Levites, and temple servants. Those from Judah, from Benjamin, and from Ephraim and Manasseh, who lived in Jerusalem, were Uthai, son of Amahud, the son of Amri, the son of Imri, the son of Bani, a descendant of Perez, son of Judah, of the Shelanites, Asaiah the firstborn and his sons, of the Zerahites, Jeuel, the people from Judah numbered 690, of the Benjamites, Shalu, son of Meshalem, the son of Hodaviah, the son of Hasenoah. 
Ibniah, son of Jeroham, Elah, son of Uzai, the son of Mikri, and Meshalam, son of Shephatiah, the son of Ruel, the son of Ibnijah. The people from Benjamin, as listed in their genealogy, numbered 956. All these men were heads of their families, of the priests, Jediah, Jehoiarib, Jakin, Azariah, son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshalam, the son of Zadok, the son of Mariath, the son of Ahitub, the official in charge of the house of God, Adaiah, son of Jeroham, the son of Pashur, the son of Malchijah, and Masai, son of Adiel, the son of Jazera, the son of Meshalam, the son of Meshilameth, the son of Imer. The priests who were heads of families numbered 1,760. They were able men responsible for ministering in the house of God. Of the Levites, Shemaiah, son of Hashab, the son of Azrakam, the son of Hashabiah, a Merarite, Bakbakar, Haresh, Galal, and Mataniah, son of Mekah, the son of Zikri, the son of Asaph, Obadiah, son of Shemaiah, the son of Galal, the son of Jedathan, and Barakiah, son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, who lived in the villages of the Netophathites. The gatekeepers, Shalom, Akub, Talman, Ahiman, and their fellow Levites, Shalom their chief being stationed at the king's gate on the east up to the present time, these were the gatekeepers belonging to the camp of the Levites, Shalom, son of Kor, the son of Abiasaph, the son of Korah, and his fellow gatekeepers from his family, the Korahites, were responsible for guarding the thresholds of the tent, just as their ancestors had been responsible for guarding the entrance to the dwelling of the Lord. In earlier times, Phinehas, son of Eleazar, was the official in charge of the gatekeepers, and the Lord was with him. Zechariah, son of Meshelemiah, was the gatekeeper at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Altogether, those chosen to be gatekeepers at the thresholds numbered 212. They were registered by genealogy in their villages. The gatekeepers had been assigned to their positions of trust by David and Samuel the seer. They and their descendants were in charge of guarding the gates of the house of the Lord, the house called the Tent of Meeting. The gatekeepers were on the four sides, east, west, north, and south. Their fellow Levites in their villages had to come from time to time and share their duties for seven-day periods. But the four principal gatekeepers who were Levites were entrusted with the responsibility for the rooms and treasuries in the house of God. They would spend the night stationed around the house of God because they had to guard it and they had charge of the key for opening it each morning. Some of them were in charge of the articles used in the temple service. They counted them when they were brought in and when they were taken out. Others were assigned to take care of the furnishings and all the other articles of the sanctuary, as well as the special flour and wine, and the olive oil, incense, and spices. But some of the priests took care of mixing the spices. A Levite named Mattathiah, the firstborn son of Shalom, the Korahite, was entrusted with the responsibility for baking the offering bread. Some of the Kohathites, their fellow Levites, were in charge of preparing for every Sabbath the bread set out on the table. Those who were musicians, heads of Levite families, stayed in the rooms of the temple and were exempt from other duties because they were responsible for the work day and night. All these were heads of Levite families, chiefs as listed in their genealogy, and they lived in Jerusalem. Jael, the father of Gibeon, lived in Gibeon. His wife's name was Makah, and his firstborn son was Abdon, followed by Zur, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. Mikloth was the father of Shemaim. They, too, lived near their relatives in Jerusalem. Ner was the father of Kish, Kish the father of Saul, and Saul the father of Jonathan, Malchai Shua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal the son of Jonathan, Merib Baal, who was the father of Micah, the sons of Micah, Pithon, Melech, Terea, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jada. Jada was the father of Alameth, Asmaveth, and Zimri, and Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Benaiah, Rephaiah was his son, Eliasa his son, and Azel his son. Azel had six sons, and these were their names, Azrakam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Shirariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. 
First Chronicles 10. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. The Israelites fled before them, and many fell dead on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines were in hot pursuit of Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malchishua. The fighting grew fierce around Saul, and when the archers overtook him, they wounded him. Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and run me through, or these uncircumcised fellows will come and abuse me. But his armor-bearer was terrified and would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he too fell on his sword and died. So Saul and his three sons died, and all his house died together. When all the Israelites in the valley saw that the army had fled, and that Saul and his sons had died, they abandoned their towns and fled, and the Philistines came and occupied them. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. They stripped him and took his head and his armor and sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim the news among their idols and their people. They put his armor in the temple of their gods and hung up his head in the temple of Dagon. When all the inhabitants of Jabesh-Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all their valiant men went and took the bodies of Saul and his sons and brought them to Jabesh. Then they buried their bones under the great tree in Jabesh, and they fasted seven days. Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Lord, and even consulted a medium for guidance, and did not inquire of the Lord. So the Lord put him to death and turned the kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. As we close out of the video today, I would like to bring your guys' attention to both my merch shop and my shop. Now, both of these I've been working on for quite some time. I started my merch shop, I believe, in 2021, something around there. And my shop, I started just last year. Both have not been doing very well at all, but I figured I would bring it to your guys' attention. Both of them have great items that you might love and you may want. So the links will be in the description of the video for both of those. So if you're interested in what I might have on both of them, go ahead and check it out. Anyways, I will see you guys later. Goodbye.